So, let us learn in this lecture few detailed things in Java. So, there are many things which we have assumed that okay, whenever you have to write Java program, we have to follow it, but now we are in a position to learn about why you should follow so many things in Java programming. So, it basically makes a little bit uh, uh, easy to understand the different concept in Java. So, first is the main method. So, main method looks very cryptic compared to the main method as we have learned in the C programming. It has many things in it. Now, we will discuss about the concept of main method. Now, before going to have this discussion, uh, here just I want to start with one another example and the name of the example is here. If you see, we create one class called the calculator. This basically calculates for any value i in it and the results will be written and stored into the value x. And here if you see, we use another method, but this method we have not defined anywhere. So, the name of the method is basically square root and here math dot square root it indicates that this method belongs to some class. The name of the class in this case is math. Now, this class is where actually. Now, if you see this is the one import section that we have. Now, import is very important whenever you want to use some ex special class defined somewhere then you should use import. So, here actually java dot lang package has been imported. So, it is basically they, there is a package where many mathematical calculations related to the classes and then methods are defined. So, this one. So, this basically the method has been imported here, so that we can in we can access the square root. So, we do not have to define the square root method of our own as it is already there in the lang package, so we can use it. So, this basically one method that is basically already library method we can say. Now, so this is the class declaration and the name of the class is calculator, it is not a main class. Now, here example is the main class in our case because it contains the main method here. So, if you see the main method, it has many things, these are the three things are prior to that public, static, void. Now, we should know exactly what is the implications of all these namings that public, what is the public, why it is static, the void and everything. And further also you see in this there is an argument, argument is like this. So, the first thing is called the type that means the name of the argument is this one which is an array actually. So, it is an array of type, the type is called the string. So, it is called the array of strings. Now, strings is basically a class, this class is defined in again java dot lang. So, these are the th few things that is very important public, static, void and then string, arcs and everything and rest of the things are very simple. Here we can see the calculator class the, of the, the class we, ha we have already declared and for this class we create an object and the name of the object is a and for this object we initialize its member element. Uh, the value i as 20 and then finally, we use this objects and then for this object we print a dot x where x basically store the square root value of i. So, it is square root of a dot i that means, in this case a dot i is 20 is 20. So, if you run this program, so this will basically print the square root of 20. Now, here few things as I already told you import is required because we want to use some class and some methods in them. So, we have to use the import lang here and this is the main class which includes the main method. Now, so main method is very important concept in Java. So, there should be one class and the one class having main method and that is the main class. And this is because as you see that in a Java program there may be many classes. So, out of these many classes, so there, there should be some indication that the execution should start from which class. So, if 
a program file contains a main method, then it gives a signal to the Java runtime environment that we have to start its execution from the main method. So, out of the many methods, right? So, the main methods if it is there in that class, so execution will start from invoking this main method and then main method will call some other method, create some many objects and then do whatever the operation it is there. So, main is basically the starting point of your execution and the Java runtime can understand that it is there. If you do not have any main method in any class, then Java runtime environment will not be able to understand that which and then it will give an error. So, this is why the main method is there and there should be a main method. Now, I will discuss about this main method having many uh, what is called the elements in it like public, static, void, mean, main and all as the string and everything. So, the first the item the you can say the first uh, word is basically public it is called the access modifier. In fact, in Java there are many access modifier three different type of access modifier a one is public another is private another is protected. So, in this case it is public and it is always should be public if you make it private or some other type then it will create an error compilation will not be successful. So, this is the one called the access specifier and the it should be public always. So, this is always required indicates that public that means the main method should be publicly usable. So, anyone can run a program if you want to restrict that this program should not be executed by anyone then you can withdraw this public you can write private, but it is no use because you have written one program which no one can run it then it is not a useless useful things right. So, you should always make the main method as a public and this is the way that public we can declare and then the void. So, void means you know every method should return sometime this is the concept of method or function or operation. Any operation can have 0 or more input and always return something like. Now, in some situation it does not return anything then in that case we should mention that void. So, in this case as the main method does not return anything because main method is not called by anyone other than the Java runtime environment itself. So, the main method is not responsible to return to anything from its caller. So, that is why it is void. So, always this keyword should be specified as the void. So, void is the return type which should be declared as a void null value actually it should not return anything in that sense. And next is static this is very important. So, some methods you know whatever the methods we have discussed earlier say area circumference in order to call this method we first create an object and for that object we call the method for c dot area or c dot circumference like this. That means, if you do not create any object then you will not be able to access any method in it. Whereas, the main class if you see we usually do not create any object of this class and then without creating any object of this class we want to access its method in which is defined in it. So, that is why if you declare a static then no object creation is not required necessary without creating any object we will be able to call this method. So, if a method is declared static, so no object is required to be created to access this method for that object, it will automatically be accessed like. So, here the main class we do not create any object, therefore, the main method should be accessed without any object creation and that is why the static method to be there. So, we have understand about why it is the public, public is a access specifier static is the keyword. So, that object instantiation without any we can access this method void that main method should return anything. Next is string arcs this is the argument. Now, these are the argument that needs to be passed to a main method. Now, this indicates that a variable number of arguments you can pass. So, that is why array it is there is a pointer to array like although pointer concept is not there Java. So, it based that arcs is basically an array of any size. Now, the size is automatically defined when you run the program we will discuss about automatic 
size declaration of this string arcs function. So, here basically the input to the main method of type string and in Java you know everything treat as a string whether integer it is also considered as a string a floating value also string any object is also string and then there is a manipulation where the different objects from can be transferred from string to type say string to integer string to float like this one. So, this is why the concept of argument here the string is declared. So, it is basically indicates that array of string objects. So, these are the few things are there we have already used it without knowing what is the reason for that, but this is basically the basic syntax of the Java main method that it should be. Okay, so, we have declared our public concept static and then void and then main method this one right and then string arcs is basically passing input to its argument in a different way. Now, output we see in the program that output from a program usually displayed on the screen. If you want to display some output on the screen, then we use one method. This method is called print ln method or it is many variations. Print ln has its many variations like print ln, print, print tape like this one anyway. So, print ln is a method. Now, this method is again defined somewhere it this method is defined in the java dot lang package and java dot lang package has one class called the system in that si class it is defined. And in fact, for the system there is a output class and then in this output class the method is defined. So, it is the idea is that the print ln method which we used here it is defined here and the print ln method has again variable number of argument as input here the argument is basically one string then one value and then another uh, value. So, the three arguments are there four arguments the other one string one value another string and another value. So, four arguments are there and so, the print ln method is customized to be any arguments actually one argument no argument many arguments whatever it is there and if you want to use multiple arguments all the arguments should be separated by plus sign. So, in this case for example, so this plus this means this argument plus this argument plus this argument plus this argument and so on. So, this is the basic syntax of the system dot out dot print ln and this is the method as I already told you defined in java dot lang package. In this java dot lang package there is a out a class variable and this is the type of print stream and in this print stream is declared in a system class. All these things regarding the output system print stream and everything we, uh, we have planned a detailed discussion when we will discuss about the input output stream concept. So, they are belong to input output stream. So, here basically is a output stream actually because system dot out dot print ln output some stream into screen actually. So, this is the concept of the system dot out dot print ln which we have frequently referred in our earlier example the concept is like this. And as I told you it has many variation uh, print ln similarly print the difference between the print ln and print is that after this output the automatically console or the cursor will go to the next line if we use this one. And so, cursor will go automatically to next line. So, that is the concept of print ln. So, ln stands for next line and if you use the print then cursor will not go to the next line, but if you use the print again force to your cursor to go to the next line then you use uh, this backslash n it is same as um, uh, c print tape function. Now, in addition to this print ln and print similar to the print tape that is uh, we have used in C program also can be used is the same as print tape. So, in that case system dot out dot print tape and then formatted because you can customize your output to express into integer format floating point format and everything. So, in our demo we will discuss about the use of print ln print and print tape format in details. So, the idea about the print ln method it is there and now I will just discuss quickly about how we can feed input to our Java program. 
So, during the execution of the program how input can be given to the Java program. So, this is called the Java runtime data input concept. Now, here is an example you see the first kind of input that can be given to Java program is called the common line input. So, this program if you look it little bit carefully you will be able to understand few more things which we have already learned earlier something extra here. Now, here we have defined one class name, name of the class is echo and this is the main method as usual earlier right. Now, here you, you will be able to understand that what is the usage of string arcs as its argument. Now, probably you can recall if you declare an array the name of the array dot length return the size of the array. So, here uh, in this example arcs dot length this is means this is the string array what is the length. Okay. So, this is the arc length and then here we use a for loop that means if this loop will roll for all elements in the arcs array and then it basically print the arguments that is there in this array. That means, the different array objects the string type of objects if it is there it will print it like this. Now, here again question is that how this elements to the array can be given it to it. Now, here is the idea is that during the execution of this program we can give the output to this one. For example, suppose the name of this class is echo dot java it has been compiled and then name of the compiled class is echo dot class. So, we can run this echo dot class from your directory and then while you run this earlier that java echo dot echo then in addition to this java echo you can give anything you can type anything. For example, here we can run this program echo and then giving three input high Devasis Samantha. Then it basically take the three string object. Now, this first string object will go to the first location of the arguments array that is 0th location. This will go to the second location of the array and then this will third. So, in this case the so 0 0th location, first location and second location and here the arcs array will be loaded with three strings hi, devasis and samantha they will be stored in the three different array locations and then size of the array is three array index from 0 to 2. So, arcs 0 will store hi, arcs 1 will store devasis and arcs 2 will store samantha. So, now you come to this for loop then this for loop start from i 0 and then for the first print first system dot out print will arcs 0 and then the space then go to the second i equals to 1 it will print arcs 1 then space then second it will print arcs 2 and same and then finally, the new line n will basically go to the next line like. So, this way if you run this program it basically gives the output which is shown here. So, here we can understand that how we can pass input to the array while it is running. Now, again the same program if we run with different input for example, say this is the program again same the input is like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, here you can see the length is 7 and then starting element is at arc 0 and the last element is arc 6 and this loop if you run then it will print all the elements one by one as this one. So, this is the output that it will print. Now, if you run this program without any input input ex simple the earlier way we have run it then the length will be 0 arcs dot length will be 0 and then this loop will not roll and it will not give any print statement to be executed. So, this is the concept the common line input to Java and it is very useful one concept in Java pro for the Java programmer that they can use it. 
Now, let us see how we can practice another simple program, we, we can understand it very quickly. Here is the another okay, is a common line input concept and this is the same thing as we have earlier, it will print the message from this print statement, it will print the arc 0 and this one. Now, if you run this program, run this program with uh, different output, it will look like. For example, if you call run this program, uh, say name user argument then Devasis, so it will just print how Devasis, how are you. So, this way you can just take the input and then in, in, in your method, in your operation belongs to that class, all the input can be used for your own purpose. That input can be string, that input can be number, that input can be any values, whatever it is there. But in case of string arcs, whatever the input you give, it will store in the form of a string type objects and later on you will just convert it. Regarding this conversion, we have some uh, discussion, we will discuss about it. Here is an example, suppose as I told you, input is in the type string class, string objects, right. And then if it is an input integer, then how we can get the integer value from it. So, this is an example here. Uh, so, let us see this example again calculator class that we have discussed earlier and then we create an object A of the calculator class like. Now, the arc 0 if we pass an input as an integer, then arc 0 will take as an input and then this method integer dot parse int it is declared in again lang function, lang package. So, integer dot parse int basically it will take an string objects as an input and parse it and then after parsing it will return an integer value and then it will store in the a dot i. So, here we can see that arguments that will be passed from the command line as an input will be passed to the objects value namely a i here for a dot i. So, the objects will be initialized once the object initialized we will be able to call this for example, for this object we can call this match square root function and then this is the syntax right. So, here basically you can see the difference there in the similar example which where we have discussed that we have initialized in the program itself statically, but here we can pass the value to a member elements data fields right while the program is in execution. So, during run time we can pass the input to it. So, this is the concept that is the input to the Java program and here if the same program if you run it then it will execute like here if you give the input say 5 6 then output it will produce which is shown here. So, so this is the way the input irrespective of its type can be passed by means of while you are invoking the program. So, here the thing is that during first invocation that means uh, running the program you have to pass all the input that is required for your program. Now, there are more better way that instead of giving the input at the very beginning of the execution, we can give the input at the time of the execution. So, there are few more other way of doing these things. So, for these things a very good utility program is there, uh, this is called the scanner class. The scanner class is defined in a package it is also defined in package called util package java dot util package and in that package one class is defined called the scanner class. So, this basically you have to import it if you want to use this scanner class and then here is an example giving that how we can take the input it is not the common line input. So, it can take the input when the program is in execution not just the before the starting of the execution. So, here uh, this method if you look at this here. So, this uh, scanner class has a constructor the scanner and this constructor is initialized by an object called the system dot in as a parameter. So, it is a default standard the system dot in you have to specify because in the system one class dot i n is a field and it basically create a scanner for this one. So, so once you call this I mean uh, create an object of the scanner here the S is the object of type scanner class which basically call this and this S basically is responsible for taking input from your uh, user. Now, here uh, for example, we give a prompt that enter a number first number. 
Now, so the numbers whatever it will be entered from the keyboard, it will be stored into temporary location num 1 and num 2 we have declared they are the temporary variable, it is declared here. And then the object that S is basically created earlier is now ready to take the input from the keyboard. So, here is a syntax that S dot next int. So, basically it will read the object as an integer from the keyboard and next int is basically it will go on reading one after another. So, it is next int. So, at the first time is the first integer that is type from the keyboard we will read it and then it basically return this value and you will store into the num 1. So, num 1 is now initialized at this one. Similarly, it will give the prompt that system dot out dot print ln for the second number and then it is also read from the keyboard and then number will be returned and store in num 2. So, this way using the scanner class we can read two numbers one by one at a time and they can be stored in the two temporary locations here and then finally, they can be manipulated. For example, this will print the sum of the two numbers just we can read by this program. So, this is the use of the scanner class and here is the one example that you can discuss about how it is uh, basically execute. Now, this is the complete discussion of one class actually uh, here we use the scanner. So, you use this statement that you have to use the special class scanner and this is the one example of a class maximum calculator which have the main method it is like this. So, this is the scanner object we have to create as I told you if you want to read from the keyboard. So, this scanner object is created and then we can read two numbers one by one using this next int as we have already discussed and these two numbers will be stored into variables a and b and then it will basically print the largest value out of the numbers that we have print if a greater than b or others and then it will print like this. So, these are the typical print statement to print the value as per the logic it is there. So, this is the one example of is an alternative alternative uh, example to the common line argument that we have discussed here and so far the things two things are there you have to import it if you want to use the scanner class then you have to create a scanner object using this one and then use this type of method that scanner object dot next int to read as many as the input you want to read it. Now, definitely you have to mention that when you should stop it, I will tell you one example so that you can understand this is an example that how it can work it. So, this is the method that we have discussed. Now, in this example we use again scanner class and using this scanner class we store a number of elements read from the keyboard and store into an array. So, is a typically uh, this is the new way of uh, defining an array, we will discuss about new definition of this array. So, this array list is already defined in util package and this is the integer this means array will store integer type of data and this is the name of the array L. So, we declare using this a, an object called the array object the name of the array object is L and using this uh, syntax. So, this is a very important syntax uh, usually people use whenever they have to use read list of numbers from the keyboard anyway. So, this is the definition that the number of elements can be temporarily stored in an array like and then size of the array will be decided here shortly. Now, here scanner input we create the new scanner object like SCNR in the last example and for this scanner object we use this input has next int that means, if it has the next in so long basically it will go on reading one by one until you stop your reading um, entering the numbers. So, it basically check that whether user has entered any number or not if it has entered then the same number in an integer format will be add into the L. So, L dot add is a one add method in the object L and it basically put into there. So, here we can see using this concept we will be able to read a number of objects number of numbers rather or any type of objects here for example, integer if you not integer is a float type we can declare the float array whatever it is there. So, the number of objects 
of different type the user can specify and then can be read from the keyboard and can be stored here. In this case we read numbers and then the same numbers can be processed here. For example, here you see we just simply uh, read each numbers from the array L using the gate method is basically read one number from the array at a time and then find the total of the all array numbers and this basically calculate average. So, this is an example this shows that how a set of numbers can be read from the keyboard can be stored in an array and then array can be used to process something for example, here how to calculate the average here. So, now let us see if you run this program uh, then okay, how it will give the output it is like this. So, it basically asks that enter the input then you are typing 5, 6, 4 and stop entering into input you should press control z. So, control z is basically to indicate that termination of scanning. So, once the terminate then it will do the program and then it will print uh, the average value for a, uh, in this example for example, the input is 5, 6, 4 the average value is uh, 5. So, this way the scanner input will work there and finally, another method which is also very useful method uh, regarding this method we will discuss in details when we will discuss the input output stream in Java. So, the method that is there as it is in the same context that I want to discuss shortly of course, so is a data input stream and using the data input stream is just like a scanner class like. Uh, so, we can create uh, we can read some input from the keyboard uh, here is an example just quickly say it. So, this is basically the data input stream is defined one package uh, IO package. So, java dot IO should be imported. So, this is why it, this is required and we are this we are declaring one class of our own it is called the interest calculator basically this program will read three values principal amount interest rate and year and it will calculate the interest this one this is a so basically it we, we have to read three different values of different time. amount is floating point value and year is maybe integer interest may be floating and finally, it will calculate interest the result will be printed on the screen. So, this is the concept that is the program is there. Now, here you see just okay, uh, how we have written this program uh, here we can declare uh, so two float objects on the principal amount and then rate of interest because they are the float type a new way of declaring float object otherwise you can simply declare as a float type or double type we have already declared. So, in that case also it can work anyway this is a new technique this is the new way of declaring float object in Java you just learn it later on you will understand many things about creating the objects actually. Okay. So, this is the uh, one way of creating float object and we have also declared another variables called the number of years it is an integer initialized as 0. And now here you see we declare one object called i n object this object of type data input stream this is again like system dot in we have used in a scanner class the standard and this data input stream class is defined in i o package. So, we use this and then it basically create an object so that it is ready to read something from the key keyboard just like scanner class there. Now, here is a temp string is a temporary string whatever it is read from the keyboard or something it is read as a string as I told you. So, we will read this string and store in a temporary called temp string. Now, this is the prompt that ent give the user prompt that enter principal amount is basically clear the buffer because whatever the user enters it will store into the keyboard buffer. So, system dot out flash basically clean the buffer. So, that buffer is 0 now or null. Then it basically for the in object that we have created using data input stream read line. So, whatever you type from the keyboard the entire things it will read and then read as a string. So, it will store in the temp string form and then this temp string will be returned as a float value and this is the function it is there just like integer dot percent here also float dot value of then string. So, it basically scan the string and then its value is converted into the float and stored as a float object. So, this is the concept similarly rate of interest plus 
and then read the keyboard buffer and rate of interest is read here. So, two value one is that principal amount is read and then rate of interest is from the keyboard. Next the number of years again the same thing in read line and here you see we have to convert this into an integer it will read as a string and using this conversion we convert this string into the integer object and number of years is the integer object. So, the three input which we have read here as the principal amount the rate of interest and number of years one the three inputs are read from the users we are now ready to calculate here we calculate the interest total as a float value and this is the formula it is for this is the simply multiplication. So, the value will be calculated and this value will be printed on the screen. So, idea it is like this and here is a quick demo so that you can understand about how it works like. So, this is the example here we can run the program the number of program is interest calculator. So, it will ask user to type it you will type it and then enter. So, it will take the value and then finally, it will complete its execution. So, this is the way you can write about the different input output streaming uh, input uh, in fact to uh, Java program three way the input is possible we have discussed these are mainly major way that we can use it. So, regarding other things we will discuss next in our next class thank you very much.